Sometimes, even in a field as deadly serious as war, there is an element of humor or weirdness. In the sphere of vehicles and war equipment, this is very common, which is influenced by the fact that sometimes the technical possibilities are far from the need of the moment, or military requirements force us to create something quickly, just to plug the holes in the front. Sherman T-10 Mine Clearer Let's set ourselves the task of making a passage through a minefield. What do we need? A heavy vehicle or a device attached to it, the pressure of which will detonate mines and armor to withstand even larger charges and hostile fire. If we add to this the requirement that it should not be a unique vehicle, but adapted to the logistics requirements of other types of armed forces, the matter becomes more complicated. But here comes American engineering to the rescue. The T-10 met all these requirements because it was a kit mounted to the hull of the M4 Sherman tank. It consisted of two steel wheels mounted at the front, of a specific design that facilitated surviving without major damage from numerous explosions, and a cylinder of a similar construction. Flying Tank A-40KT The genesis of one of the most peculiar ideas in the history of armored weapons dates back to the early 1930. At that time, the Soviet Union had not only extensive airborne forces, but also a concept of their use that was ahead of the armies of other countries. The problem that reduced the usefulness of paratroopers was that parachuted soldiers could easily find themselves in trouble if they were not supported by heavy equipment. Various countries have tried to solve this problem in later years using gliders, but in the Soviet Union, where work on delivering heavy equipment by air was the most advanced, it was decided to reach for a radical method. The solution was to be a flying tank, landed together with the crew sitting inside and ready for action as soon as it touched the ground, thanks to the wings being thrown back. Easy to say, harder to do. Not all of the soldiers came from Chelyabinsk, so simply dropping a tank from a plane was out of the question. Wings and empennage were attached to the T-60 light tank, calling this bizarre structure A-40KT, Relieved of everything superfluous, the machine with one daredevil inside set off on its first flight, towed like a glider. Although the tank rose into the air, its heavy weight and the aerodynamics of the flying brick did not allow it to reach the speed needed for safe flight. Despite the premature release of the tow bar, the tanker managed to land safely, but it would not have been possible if the tank was fully equipped and much heavier. Since the A-40KT was not promising, and the Russians trying to stop the German offensive had completely different priorities at the time, the project was cancelled. Zveno The Russians decided to approach the problem differently and use the large Tupolev TB-3 bomber as a base for smaller aircraft. There were also trials with the smaller TB-1. Several configurations were tested. In one of them, TB-3 was to take on board, or rather on the wings, five smaller machines. One of them was to be attached under the fuselage after the launch of the set. However, a slightly more modest set called SPB in the form of two I-16 fighters attached under the wings of the base plane was chosen as the most promising. The concept of using such a team assumed that a heavy and long-range aircraft would deliver smaller machines armed with bombs in the vicinity of the target. There they will detach from the TB-3 and do what was impossible for a large bomber, they will perform precision bombing, compensating for the small number of bombs carried with high accuracy. Interestingly, these unusual machines were used in combat. In the summer of 1941, several Zveno SPB systems made successful attacks on targets in Romania, which was cooperating with Germany. Alket Raumgarat Alket Raumgarat was constructed in 1942 in cooperation with Alket, Krupp, and Daimler-Benz. It was created in response to the losses suffered by the Soviet mines by the German armored forces on the Eastern Front. The construction of the vehicle was based on a combination of the hull with the engine and turret of the Panzer I light tank, mounted on a gun carriage with the wheels of a heavy artillery tractor. The vehicle was steered using the rear steering wheel. The hull was armored with armor plates 20 to 40 millimeter thick, the turret 15 millimeter thick, the bottom of the vehicle, most exposed to mine explosions, was 80 millimeter thick. The two-man crew had two MG-34 machine guns. The only example of the Alket Raumgarat was captured in 1945 by Soviet soldiers at the training ground in Kummersdorf and transported to the military base in Dresden. 
and in 1947 to the Proving Ground in Kubinka, where it was tested. It is currently exhibited in the Tank Museum in Kubinka. Minenraumer 3, mine-clearing vehicle based on a Panzer III chassis with a very highly raised suspension prototype only, is not known which firm developed this specialized mine-clearer tank in mid-1941. Originally was taught that the extended suspension was used to roll over the mines and the lengthened torsion bar arms would be capable of withstanding the blast. However, the average anti-tank mine would cut off the track pins. Instead, the bar at the front was used as the connection for two heavy steel rollers. BMW Schneekrad. In 1936, an unusual prototype motorcycle with track drive was built at the BMW factory, the BMW Schneekrad. The construction of the vehicle was based on the components of the BMW R12 motorcycle, which used a frame and a two-cylinder boxer engine. Little is known about the vehicle itself. There was probably only one prototype, of which only two photos remain. The design was distinguished by a caterpillar drive, which, at least according to the photos, looks solid. The front wheel probably has a tire, but the rear wheel and the two supporting it from below do not. BMW Schneekrad was presented with an attached TR500 sidecar. Unfortunately, this is all the available information about him. The design probably didn't catch on due to its complicated design, but it is possible that it influenced the creation of the Kettenkrad, which used a front wheel from a motorcycle and a bogey with tracks. The BMW Schneekrad was not the only motorcycle of its kind, but it is certainly one of the more mysterious.